What's up guys, my name is Matt Spells, and today I'm going to talk about Brilliant Diamond with Shining Pearl, and just go over my thoughts in a ramble type video, like I always do. Um, so, the game looks great. Uh, my biggest complaints about Trend 4 are the uh, grinding sucks at the end because the level curve is stupid. The uh, the game, the music, I don't like the sound chip really, I guess, of Gen 4. I think it's Gen 5. I really think in looks and sound, Gen 5 is an improvement overall. And I think Gen 4 doesn't really look or sound that good. I'd rather just go play 2D, full 2D. Or go for Gen 5. So they uh, improved all that. The music looks fan. Or the music looks. The music sounds fantastic. I'm so glad they kept the game corner theme and used it for the uh, the style shop. Amazing. Uh, it sounds great. I love what they did the soundtrack. The game looks great. Obviously, it's not Apple or, or it's not apples to apples with Gen 8 because Gen 8 is a um, it's a built from the ground up from scratch on the Switch. This is a remake of an older game, so the locations are already there. But like in battle backgrounds look even better than Sword and Shield. Um, like the, the the underground places too look really good. Those those backgrounds really pop. Um, they that's what I wanted the most, and that's what they fixed. The, uh, the underground is also very, very great. They made it so much more fun, and it was already fun to begin with, but now it's even better. Um, basically, yeah, they, they fixed everything that I really had a problem with Gen 4, they fixed. Um, I, I I think Gen 4's problems, like, with it, it, it never really excited me or entertained me as much as other games. But I think part of that was just the, uh, the music and sound I just never liked as much. And the Pokédex and Diamond Pearl suck, too. Um... We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, but overall, yeah. It might not sound like because I'm, I'm spending a short time on the pros. So it might not sound like it's a lot. But really, these games are great. There's From a Pokemon game's perspective, these are just really good games overall. Right? There's I don't need to go over everything because they're just good. I can, I guess, say random aspect is good. You know? The gym puzzles are fun, I guess. Even or something like that. They're good. Everything is great. Everything is sound. There's only two things that aren't good. Um, and I want to make it clear that I really enjoyed uh, the game. I think these are some of the better Pokemon games we've ever had. And I don't say that lightly. I, I think these are some of the best. If I'm tier listing these, these are probably going to like A tier. Like straight A tier. Um, they're, they're definitely below like Black and White 2. Um, because those are my, like, favorites. They're not that, but... I mean, I'm putting this up there with, like, Gen 6. I thought these were really fun games. Um, they basically just took all the things about Gen 4 that sucked and made it better. Um, there are a few things that I have complaints about. There's two things in particular I have complaints about. One of them is twofold, and the other one is singular fold, I guess you could say. Um, and one of... Uh, but it does also bring up a problem with Sword and Shield. And I'll, I will talk about that here. And then, um... But... All those problems, except for the one that's Sword and Shield related, because that's not really a problem with Diamond Pearl. It just brings up a problem with Sword and Shield, um, are alleviated by something. And I'll tell you what all those things are. So first of all, let's go into the twofold problem, and that is the levels. So the levels are there's a twofold problem here. The first one is for me, the context. I used a team of 14 Pokemon that became 13 really by the end because we all got shafted hard. And I didn't even want to use it after that, after learning about it. So I had a team of 13, basically. And sometimes we have always in my party getting levels at the end of the game. Um, I don't think that really changed all that much, though, in the end. Um, I started, I had a big team. Not everybody has a big team. From what I know, my friend who used six Pokemon was overleveled, which is why I recommend using a bigger team. But for team of 14, 14 we'll call it 13, 13, team of 13. Um, I was over leveled to the trainers and wild Pokemon for the first six gyms or so. And I was, but I was on par with the gym leaders, which was interesting. Um, and that leads me to think that the XP share did its job. It kept me on par with the toughest trainers, which is what it's supposed to do. Because you level to those trainers, not to the random trainers who are naturally going to be easier anyway. But, at the end of the game, after Cantilave, all of a sudden, things caught up to me really quickly, and then they passed me, and actually had to grind, I think I grinded, had to grind 
between three and five or five and seven levels. I forget exactly if I won it with level 55s or 57s into the Elite Four at the end of the game, but I was well under, way under level for the Elite Four. So the level curve was still like this. But there's a difference. First of all, um, like I said, I don't think the XP share is actually a problem. Because you can access your box like you can in Sword and Shield, which actually, this is a fantastic feature. Always bring this back. Always. Um, I, it allowed you to use more Pokemon, because you could cycle them in and out whenever. So the moment, you know, one Pokemon, let's say you've got eight Pokemon, and they're all level 40, except two in the box are level 39, you can swap the two highest a lot for the 39. And then all of a sudden, you know... Maybe one of those Pokemon has 43. You can put one of the, take that out and put one of the 42 back in, you know, that's in the box. You can cycle out very easily. So it allows you to use more Pokemon. And by using more Pokemon, this also alleviates the stress on levels because with the XP share not being able to be turned off, you can actually get a, um, use a large party of Pokemon and swap them. And you've never been able to do that before except in Sword Shield. And if memory serves me right, I was never really under leveled in Sword and Shield, so I never really wanted to do that. I was good with my six Pokemon, um, and I still had some challenges late in the game, um, especially late in the game. This um, twofold, right? So the over being under leveled, I wish they would have either let you turn the XP share off, but actually more than that, I'm fine with it being on all the time. I wish they would have just leveled up the Pokemon. Because the underground as well, except like right after you beat a gym, we're actually over leveled you as well the entire game, which is interesting. But I do wish that you could, um, I was gonna say, um, I wish that the trainers and the wall Pokemon were a little bit higher leveled early in the game. But at the end of the game, I was allowed, I was able to use 14 Pokemon, which is something I've never been able to do, and I thought that was really cool. And I was still under leveled by the end of the game. I had to grind a bit, but grinding was easy because the EXP share is the EXP share, the modern EXP share. So overall, it was a problem that they were under leveled early, but that's really it because I guess under, well, under, you wish it was a perfect curve that you don't have to grind at all, but honestly, I don't mind grinding a little bit because under leveled, being under leveled late in the game was definitely more difficult because the late game is more difficult with evolved Pokemon than early game when everything is evolved, right? Especially when you get some evolved things, because then those things like my Crobat, who was a Crobat before anything else except for like Pergly of um, Mars, <laughs> was evolved. <laughs> so Crobat was like killing things early game for me. Um, but yeah, it was a problem that things were. I, I wish they would have made the levels a bit higher early in the game. But besides that, uh, it's hard to complain because it's way better than the alternative of having to grind Pokemon by Pokemon instead of all at once with the XP share late in the game. And because I use so many Pokemon, oh yeah, the other thing, because I use so many Pokemon, um, I always have Pokemon out of my party. So when my Electro-type was on my party, Gyarados was an issue. When my Dark-type was out of my party, um, my Dark-types, uh, then Kadabra and Alexander were big issues. And I had a lot of overlapping with some things. I had uh, my Dark, Poison, and Flag overlapped a lot between my Pokemon, some of my Pokemon. So some of the Pokemon that were way heavy in those types which left me weak to things. So that ended up giving me a bit of a challenge too. And obviously late game was a bit of a challenge because things are high level and Pokemon are strong late game, so. Overall, a bit of a problem, but honestly it was a really minor issue. Um, it's much better than gens one through four, where you just all of a sudden level curve does this and it's hard to grind and get to that point because it takes so long to grind. Um, even if you're, uh, I, even if you're um, over, I don't remember how over leveled you are at points earlier or in those games, also. Um, so maybe that's better, but I'd rather be have a tough, difficult game and a bit easier time early in the game. Which, again, if you use 14 Pokemon, you'll probably be in the same situation as me and it will be super, super easy exactly the entire time. And anyway, Pokemon games aren't like super difficult to be with. If you want a difficult Pokemon game, you go play a Drown or Rock or something. Um, not that it was the case for the newer games, but. Yeah, it, I guess it would have been nice. I would have liked the option to be able to turn the XP share off. But again, really, it was balanced well enough. Well enough, because with the 14 Pokemon, or a bigger party, basically, uh, it wasn't that, it wasn't like, yeah, it, it wasn't It wasn't an issue to me. It's not something that would make me never want to play the game again, right? Because um, like the, the alternative is way better than what it, was, what it used to be. 
So I'm, I'm very fine with how the levels work, but it is a bit of a, it is still a complaint I have with them being way under and then having the level curve do this again. It's, I mean, that's exactly what the problem was in the other game. It's just now you can grind easier at the cost of being a bit over level early in the game. And I'm, I would much rather have that than the alternative. The other thing that was problematic was the Pokedex because this uses the down and pearl Pokedex and down and pearl Pokedex is terrible. It is so bad. The main game Dex is awful. I hate it. It makes me never want to play Diamond ever again. You have, you can get the, you can get the Platinum Pokemon, Platinum Pokemon in the Underground. You don't get Pokedex entries for them, but you can get them in the Underground. But the Platinum Pokedex I think is 210, and the Synodex is 150. So 60 Pokemon are just not there. Um, like, like I said, you can get them in the Underground. So it's again problem is alleviated, right? The Overleveled issue is alleviated by using a lot of Pokemon. The grinding issue at the end of the game, if you use a lot of Pokemon, is alleviated by being easy to grind. Not having a good Pokedex and the Sinnoh Dex is alleviated by the Platinum Dex being underground. But it is a pain in the ass to catch those Pokemon, and the Sinnoh Dex still sucks. That doesn't change that fact magically. Um, there is... It is awful. All of those cool... Evol you know, we think back, what are, what's one of the things we like about Gen 4? Oh, where they give all those cool evolutions. You know, Magmortar, Electivire, Rhyperior, Yonmega. Well, none of those Pokemon are in the Gen 4 Pokédex. It's Glyce... Or no, is it Glycecore? I think Weavile is because I call it Weavile above ground. I don't know about Gligar because it's also you know, Razor Claw, Razor Fang. I never saw one above ground, though. And I'm not sure I saw one even in like Elite 4 or anything like that. Um, I guess Roserade counts as an evolution. I forget if that was one of the four when I was looking. It might be Weez Weavile, Roserade, Honchkrow, and Mismagius. Uh, Honchkrow, Mismagius, or Virgin Exclusives. Um, Honchkrow to Defend. And Mismagius to Pearl. All the cool ones, though. Magnezone, Electivire, Magmortar, Yanmegal. You knew Magmortar because the American Dex only has two fire types. Um, all this one gone. No, Eevee. Eevee's not in the, the, the regular, uh, regular Dex. Absol's not in the regular decks. Tropius you get, and the uh, um, Tropius is not in the uh, main decks. A bunch of cool just out. All the cool evolutions and a bunch of other things are just out of it. Uh, and it leaves you with a really terrible decks. But that leads us to a problem with Sword and Shield. <laughs> because one thing this game does have, which is amazing, is the national decks for Gens 1 through 4. But that means you got 493 Pokemon in the game. Then you've also got in Sword and Shield all the Gen 8 Pokemon. And then now that the DLC, well, in the regular game, plus now with the DLC, you've got a lot of Gen 5, 6, and 7 Pokemon. If you add all those Pokemon up, you've got roughly, you've got somewhere over 800. I, I didn't, don't know my math because I might have, you know, double counted or not counted at all something because I thought I saw it before. But there's roughly 800 Pokemon in total available between both big Gen 8 games, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Sword and Shield. And there's about 900 Pokemon total. So now, for no reason, you can't get, like, Florges, the Gen 5 or 6 starters, Minior, and a bunch of other Pokemon. Kalmala, I think. Are just not in any Gen 8 game. You put them into Pokemon Home and it'd say, oh, you can't transfer that. And the question is now, why? They said no national decks, and at first I was like, okay, it's cool, because it, we use, you know, it's a smaller decks, right? And then it's then it kind of hit me recently, wait a second, most of those national decks Pokemon, you know, they're national decks, you get them after the game is finished. And the reasoning was like, oh, well, you can't expect to do that in you know, every Pokemon game now. But, if you've got over 400 Pokemon in one game, and you've got 493 in another game, and combined, because there's overlapping Pokemon, you have over 800 out of 900. Is it really that difficult to put in one, uh, all the Pokemon into one game? It's the Switch. Um, so no, I'm not letting that slide. That's ridiculous. Now there's just a handful of Pokemon that are just not available at all. What about... I'm a Samwatt fan. Samwatt's one of my favorite Pokemon. And I know a lot of people might not be Samwatt fans, but they are probably... Greninja fans, who's in Smash, as you can see by my amiibo. Greninja's not in the game. So I'm in the same boat as all you Greninja fans. My favorite starter line is not in the game. I am going to get in Legends Arceus. 
but that's not main mainline Pokemon. So why can't you just stick these Pokemon in so we can have them in just one singular switch uh, or generation specifically uh, for a game this generation? Um, but with the DLC, I'm not expecting to get another game because they gave us the DLC, which is way better because it's, it's cheaper. Um, cheaper alternative, adding new areas instead of here's a new game where you can go to these new areas for the same price as the regular game. Um, anybody who thinks the DLC is uh, bad is wrong. Um, I will fight you on that. Uh, but yeah, there's just a handful of Pokemon now because we've got a National Dex in the Gen 4 games. My Switch is right below me. Uh, because of the National Dex there and the Pokemon in Sword and Shield, now over 800 Pokemon are available in Gen 8 in some way and a handful are not. And it's dumb that that handful isn't and there's no excuse. Given that between two games, almost everything is available. There's no excuse for that handful of Pokemon, that under 100, to not be available at all. If you're going to do something like this, where you have the Gen 4, like you're going to read Gen 4 and give a National Dex, then you need to have every Pokemon from Gen 5 onwards into Sword and Shield. Even, and you, I mean, you still have some, because then between the games, you'll have Gens 1 through 4 National Dex, and then Gen 5 through 8 National Dex. Boom. Now we've got this weird thing where, like, just a tiny handful of Pokemon just inexplicably or however you say the word, are not in the game. That's really terrible. So yeah, that's my now my biggest problem with Sword Shield. Not a Gen 4 problem though, because, well, the Pokedex sucks in Gen 4, but the National X is not a problem there. I'm so glad it's there. I love the National X in that game. But uh, yeah, it's it's a bit of a problem in, uh, it's a bit of a problem in uh, Gen 8 now, because now why can't those Pokemon be used in anything? So yeah, those are my thoughts on Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Overall, um, the leveling was, yeah, it's a bit weird because it's under leveled at first and then level curve is sharp again, but, and the Pokedex is kind of shitty, but overall, I really enjoyed the games. I got to use a lot of Pokemon. Um, I hope, I can't wait for new Pokemon games because now I kind of want either an EXP share that is, I, 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 I would like it. Okay. Basically, I'm really excited for the National Dex and, uh, Pokemon Home so I can, get to uh so i can breed pokemon and put them on this game because then i have four you know i've got every pokemon as an option right i do worry with only 150 pokemon that i'm gonna run out of pokemon to use if i'm using teams of 14 every, or teams of 12 let's say every time but that's not for the first playthrough so not not not, not a problem not a problem right now but uh yeah the layout the leveling is a little bit weird because you're over leveled and then you're suddenly under leveled because of the curve spikes but it's not really that big of an issue in the grand scheme of things, I think the game's still fun and enjoyable. There's still challenges if you have a big team, um, if you don't have the right Pokemon in. Oh, you know, all of a sudden, here's Kadabra, and I don't have a good counter to Kadabra. Kadabra's pretty scary, you know, if you don't have a good counter, because it's fast and hits very hard. Or Gyarados, Gyarados especially. Uh, that's another one. So, and then again, the Pokedex wasn't great, but that's, it's it's Gen 4 remakes. You kind of have to accept that. And it's alleviated a bit by the Platinum decks being underground, so... Overall, very great games. I'd rate them, uh... I'd rate them 10 out of 10. Okay, not 10 out of 10. They're not my favorite. On Pokemon scale, they're like A tier. They're A tier, okay? You saw my tier list? They're A tier. That's where I put them. They're A tier. They're probably along lines of like Gen 6 and Gen 3 for me. I'm excited to go back and play them again. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video.